Hey, what's up everybody? Chris Mohan here, back at it, doing another road reflection. Uh, <laughs> I recorded one yesterday and then my phone crapped out on me halfway into it. And, uh, and I was like, you know, I could probably do it better. And I got some, I got some time on the road coming up. Running a few errands, so I figured, it get, you know, and, and I'm and I'm hitting it, hitting it in high traffic time. So I wanted to, I wanted to do this because uh, we have an election coming up, and uh, I was part of this panel yesterday, uh, or or day before yesterday, because I think I'll probably put this video out at the day after I record it. Um, but it was a election panel, right? It was a bunch of like average regular folks from across the city it's an independent if you've if you've read the independent uh and and i, I got to be a part of it which was very cool um he th this guy interviewed me for a series called polarized talking to american voters so i gave him my perspective i i'm pretty sure i've shared the article around if, if not it it'll be it'll be up on my website and stuff uh but i basically talk about how i my 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 vote was meant to be for Tulsi Gabbard or uh, Bernie Sanders. Those were the two candidates that I believed held my beliefs uh, the closest, uh, you know, so those were the candidates that I won. And that's no surprise to people that I think watch this channel, right? Uh, but it was it was a bit of a surprise to, uh, you know, mainstream kind of corporate neoliberal paper. Um, a journalist of from from that paper maybe you know it's just not perspectives that they might hear um we did this thing and he, what what i really got out of it was i mean it was an interesting discussion and you know i wasn't the only person that wasn't going to vote for either of the candidates um and i addressed a couple things within uh within that interview uh one being i'm not really telling anybody who i'm voting for uh, if you want to have that conversation with me, I'm happy to have that discussion with you in private, and, and we can try to keep it, you know, um, respectful and civil, but when I've done it in, uh, when I've basically come out and said, this is who I'm not voting for, but I'm uncertain of who I am going to be voting for, people take that in various different directions. And, and regardless of what direction they take it, it's usually the direction of vitriol. Um, you know, I've been called a Trump supporter, and uh, I'm, I'm destroying the country. Uh, a lot of voter shaming. And, I, you know, after the 2016 election, I decided that voter shaming wasn't going to be the direction that I'm, I'm heading in, in in terms of talking to people and uh, dealing with the fallout of the 2016 election. And, and I've done my best to try to, to do that. Now, d does that mean that I agree with Trump supporters? Absolutely not, but I am going to listen to uh, what they're saying and why they decided to vote for this individual, vote for this person that... And same thing with Biden, right? And and the big question that I always ask for, for people that are Biden supporters or that were Hillary supporters is, uh, aside from saying that they are not Trump, Please give me a reason to vote for this person and not against Trump. And so far, they they have not. Um, they've just, you know, said things like, "Well, if you can't figure that out, then you must be a fucking idiot," or whatever vitriolic bullshit that they throw at me. Right. So I, I've I've decided that if you want to have a personal, if you want to have a private conversation. Um, and, and I'm going to preface it that way. I'm going to say that this is between you and me. Uh, if this goes out in public, then this is, you know, I'm not okay with that. Uh, I'm doing this as a friend, right? As a friend, uh, you know, so I'm happy to have the conversation in private. And I basically said that and, and I brought up the, the, the vitriol. And here's the thing is like, it's not Trump supporters that get vitriolic. I mean, some, some do, but most don't. It's coming from the it's coming from the left. It's coming from my liberal friends. It's coming from my staunch Democrat friends. Um, you know, so uh, so I'm I'm, I'm kind of noticing that electoral politics has become far more uh, of a uh, I think a, a polarizing topic and a far more toxic topic, uh, especially in the last four years, right? And uh, so. Part of the thing that I want to talk about is, is this. One is, regardless of who wins, 
whether it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump, if either of these candidates win, the people will lose. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, regardless of who wins, we still get to see hyper-militarism. Regardless of who wins, we still get to see imperialism going across the globe. Coups, you know, big support for coups, big support to take down these faux socialist nations. Oh, the socialists are coming, they're coming, they're coming for your rights, they're coming for your babies, they're here to eat your family, they're here to eat your candies, right? That's all they preach. Regardless of whether it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump, that same rhetoric will be thrown out there. Uh, Medicare for all. We will not get Medicare for all in this country, regardless of who wins. We will not get uh, less poverty in this country. The income divide will stay as it is, right? The insurance companies will do the same thing. Net neutrality is still going to be in trouble, especially because neither of the candidates really understand how the internet works, right? Like Donald Trump knows how Twitter works, and that's about it. Joe Biden has not got a clue about what the fucking internet is. Neoliberal and neoconservative policies will be in play and the people will lose. We will not get the things that we're fighting for, right? We're not going to get better criminal justice reform with either party in power. You have a person that crafted the crime bill of 94, which has led to the uh, increase of police brutality, the increase of minorities in prison, the, the, the expansion of the prison industrial complex. And then he picks a vice president that basically played into that too as a way to heal Right? This is what people say. Joe Biden is going to heal the country. Heal the country by doing what? By locking up black protesters? By locking up anybody that stands against the status quo? That stands with Black Lives Matter? That stands with anybody that's anti-war? That's not healing the country. So, you know, I... I think we are going to lose. So, so where do we go from here, right? Like that's, that's I think the big question. Where do we go from here? And uh, a lot of people have talked about where do we go from here, kind of thing. Um, and I have also I've been thinking about that as well. Um, I think where we go from here is realizing that electoral politics is probably the literal least that we can do as a society. Uh, it is. It just, that's just a reality, right? Like, it is the least that we can do as a society. Electoral politics doesn't get us the rights that we want. It doesn't get us the things that we need. I just listed off a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, we need less wars. We need uh, to, to get rid of the income divide. People need to be treated better. We need better criminal justice reform. We need... Uh, you know, uh, cops to be <laughs> not bed with fucking white supremacists. We need all these things. Universal basic income. Well, how are we going to get that sort of stuff? And a lot of people think that it's, well, we'll elect people that say they're going to. But, you know, look at what's what's happened in recent years. You have, you have Bernie Sanders, who's pretty much bending at the heels are bending at the knee of, uh, to the Democratic Party. You have AOC that isn't really pushing back against uh, some of the bigger corporate uh, people. Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, same thing. So uh, it kind of perpetuates this, this notion that Washington is different than the rest of the country. You have the, you have the Washington elites that are separate from everybody else, the coastal elites that are separate from everybody else. Yeah, you can vote. I'm not saying don't vote. I'm just saying realize what voting is. It's just putting in a, a figurehead that, that may or may not represent your ideologies, that may or may not represent what you, what, what you believe in. They might not be able to get it done. And most of them don't have the motivation to get it done. They just want to kind of be in the seat of power. So they can, you know, posture like Nancy Pelosi has been doing, like Mitch McConnell does, like Chuck Schumer does right they'll they'll posture and they'll throw these performative politics battles that don't really mean anything and that at the end of the day you still don't fucking have your health care you still can't afford food you're still not getting paid at your, at your job properly right amazon is still getting massive tax breaks we're still fighting seven wars across the country and trying
try to expand that shit. We're still, we're, we're still spying on our citizens. We're still doing all these things. D Joe Biden's going to mean all these things, too. Joe Biden and Donald Trump, both of these guys are going to mean that all of the status quo bullshit continues. Really, what, what the difference is, do you want it to be in the shadows or do you want it to be in your face so you can do something? So how do we get it, right? We, well, we'll vote somebody. That's great, but what if the progressive starts bending at the heels of the neoliberals? What if the progressive starts bending at the knee of the, the centrist Democrats that have been there for 40 years? That have been sucking at the teats of corporate power for, for however long they've been in office. Electoral politics is, is the least that you can do. And, and that's part of the reason why people fight as much as they do. Because they don't want to do the actual groundwork that needs to be done. They don't want to do the amplification. They don't want to learn. They don't want to be... They don't want to be actively involved in the politics because we have been conditioned to think that we can't be. That once we represent this person, this person will go and do all the things that we want them to do. We check that little box, we circle that, we color in that little, little fucking scantron bubble. And we're done. This passive, half-hearted hand job of a thing that we do that's American politics. And then we sit there and wonder and we go, why is everything not changing? Well, think of when things started to actually change, right? Uh, the Black Panthers, for example. I, I, I've done a whole fucking video series on the history of the Black Panthers. And the thing that they're not, they, nobody talks about the Black Panthers is their community initiatives, right? The Black Panthers put in Medicare for All. They fed kids. They fed their communities. They were able to take people to the hospital for free. They were, and the way they did that is by bringing communities together and having a handbook for it. They had, a, they basically had a standard operating procedure to make that shit work. And they weren't politicians. Now, Bobby Seale and Fred, uh, uh, why am I forgetting his name? Holy shit! I feel like a dick. It's not Fred Hampton. It'll come back. Oh, wow. I feel like a total dick right now, you guys. I feel like a total fucking dick. But they didn't go to law school, they, the, the, the founders of the Panthers. They, they didn't know, you know, the, the legal system to a degree. But, again, that's not... what, what It was community organizing. So, where do we go from here? You want to sit there and only support electoral politics? Well, that's not going to cut it. If you really want things to change, you're going to actively have to change on some level. Uh, and that might be a community initiative, right? So if you, see, if you see something or if you have the ability to start some kind of community initiative to say, okay, well, you know what? There's a bunch of people in my community that have lost their jobs or lost a vast amount of their income that are having a really hard time paying their rents and putting food on their table. And a bunch of these people have families. They have kids and so on and so forth. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and talk to some local businesses. I'm going to go talk to some farms and say, well, do you have excess food? Why don't you donate some of that stuff? Uh, or, or we'll do a crowdfund thing uh, within the community where people chip in five bucks a month or ten bucks a month or whatever it is, whatever they can spare, and we'll purchase all this food and then we'll distribute it amongst the people that need it. You can do that with doctors. You can do that with medicines. You can do that with small pharmacies and things of that sort. And the example's there already because the fucking Panthers already did it. Their survival programs were, were highly effective to the point where the FBI was like, well, they're helping people outside the government, so we have to destroy them. The Panthers already did it. They already set up a template. They already gave you a way to do it. And they also gave you, you know, what happens, what to look out for in this situation. Now, if you, if you still, you're saying, well, Chris, I can't do any of that sort of stuff, right? I can't participate in these community things. I've got too much going on. I just want to cast my vote, and that's it. Well, great. We'll cast a vote for somebody that, you know, actually matches your fucking belief system. And support the, the causes that, that actually meet your belief systems rather than, rather than having to compromise on them for the lesser of two evils. For 
you know, shit candidates because that's not how you get better candidates. That's not how you get that person in, in, in office that's actually going to legislate and put bills on, on the behalf of the people, on, on what you believe in, right? So wh where do you find something like that? Okay, you do have third parties, which people shit on all the time. Uh, and, and they do the spoiler argument, which is a bullshit argument. It's just a wrong argument. Uh, when people vote third party, it's because they're voting third party. It's because they're saying we need more parties and we need more voices and a, a, a wider array of representation in American politics. It's not a spoiler. If you think it's a spoiler, you don't get it. And you should do a little bit more research because there's been various times in American politics within within the last 100 years where, you know, there have been third parties. 1912, a million votes went to the Socialist Party of America. 20% of people voted for the Bull Moose Party instead of the Republicans. 26% of America at that point wanted anything else aside from the fucking Republican or the Democratic Party, and you're saying that they're, we've actually backslid. We're in a worse position today than we were in fucking 1912. We are less progressive than we were in 1912. Is that the argument that's being made by these people? Again, that goes into the voter shaming aspect of it, which is something that I will not do. I will not participate in. And if that is a, a course of discussion that you would like to take part in, then I don't want to take part in that discussion. I, will, I, won't, be, I won't be a part of that discourse uh, because I see no value in vote shaming. But there's another way, right? You have the movement for a people's party coming up. Look into the movement for a people's party. Put your money where your mouth is in regards to that. These are people that have come together and said, hey, we want a better party in America. And we are going to work to get that in place. So in 2022, they're going to push forward uh, to to put in, you know, uh, local and congressional candidates uh, within within their within their the, the, this people's party. And then in 2024, they're going to put a, uh, somebody up against both of these corporate parties. Which is, which is part of the argument against third parties, right? Why not start small? Oh, why don't you go for uh, mayors or governors or, or senators or representatives or what have you? And they could if they were allowed to be on the ballot. I mean, in Pennsylvania, they wouldn't fucking put the Green Party on the ballot. Because, oh my God, the Greens take away from the Dems and the Dems lost... Pennsylvania this is a battleground state, so we'll do everything we can. How is that democracy? How is that fair? What is the justification from staunch Democrats in doing that? That's cheating just as bad as the fucking Republicans are. You are disenfranchising Green Party voters. The other thing I would say is learn. Learn about your history. Learn about where the Democratic and Republican parties have come from and how they became what they are, what they supported, why they don't support certain things. If you really want the people to win, we're going to have to learn from our past mistakes and stop making them over and over again. That's part of the reason why I was like, I can't vote for either of these candidates because one, they're one of the same. One's a crypto-fascist, one's an outright fascist. But I also know too much about these two parties. I also know too much about the history of this country. And based on that, I don't want to be a part of repeating the same mistake. So I made the choice that I made of not voting for either one of these candidates. So, you know, just to kind of come to this conclusion I you know look for some community initiatives take part in the community be good to your neighbors be good to each other learn and educate each other be em be empathetic that the Democrats preach empathy all the time right I, actually practice that listen to what the other side has to say understand where they're coming from You know, 
educate yourself and look for some uh, alternatives, right? Support the mutual aid revolution that's happening across this country because the Democrats in office and the Republicans in office have no interest in helping you. Community-driven efforts, grassroots, uh, grassroots mobilization, support the activists, support the protests, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's the way we're gonna do it. When, when, when things work from the ground up, when the people decide that this is how things are gonna work, this is what we're gonna do, and this is how we're gonna fucking get this shit done, and the people decide that's what they're gonna do, that's when legislation changes. So for the for the people that believe that legislation, wow, that lady did not fucking look behind her at all. Uh, but when people believe that you know, the, oh, it's all about the legislation, it's all about the legislation, it's all about the legislation, and they keep going on and on about that, right? Um, and that and that is that is one of the arguments that constantly gets made is that oh, it's all about that legislation. The legislation is what's important. That's why you have to vote. That's why you have to. Uh, bring people in. That's why you have to do all that stuff. I'm not saying that that's not important, but I'm, I'm saying that that's not the be-all, end-all. Support that community. Learn about this stuff. You know, stop stop paying attention to the big corporate bullshit. Start, start paying attention to some of the smaller people out there. Do community effort do initiatives, right? Support those community initiatives. Learn about the issues. You have to be an active participant in politics in order to actually want to drive change. In some way, shape, or form. There's various different roles to do that. You don't have to be the person that's out on the streets marching day in and day out. You could be somebody that funds something. You could be somebody that gets together within your neighborhood once a week. And you're like, hey, let's learn about the Black Panthers. Let's learn about the Espionage Act. Let's learn about, you know, Eugene Debs. All these people. Let, what do we do to fix something like this? Who do we support? Is there somebody within our community we can amplify, you know, and, and put into place that would that would actually put these values, um, prop up these values? Is there is there somebody that we can we can do that with? We can't be divisive towards each other anymore. That's not particularly doing us any good. That's why I decided to start doing the videos that I did and the, on the topics that I did, right? Digging into the history and uh, talking about the uh, topics that, that I'm talking about and, and really addressing some of the problems that we have. I mean, honestly, it was like I went to a protest and, and, I, and I was just emotionally, mentally, and physically drained and I couldn't... And, and I kept thinking, like, well, where do I go from here? How do I help? How, how, what, what do I what, what do I do? How do I make my, you know? Uh, and and I figured out, you know, maybe marching isn't the thing for me, but amplification is, education is. I'm I'm I could be good at that. That's what I chose to do. So, that's what I decided to do. Oh man, people are weird and... People are weird in rush hour traffic. But, you know, that's the thing. Find your role, be a part of the community. You'll, you'll figure it out. It's not, it, it's really not that hard, but it really, in order to, in order to drive change, we're gonna have to be active participants in politics. We're gonna have to be active participants in this stuff. It can't stop at electoral politics. It can't stop at checking a box. Joe Biden is not going to come save everybody. It's the reality of it. Uh, so, you know, whatever decision you made, you had a reason to do it. Uh, and uh, and I and I hope that you're fine with the decision that you that you made. Uh, and. We'll see what happens after November 3rd. But the, but the job's not done on November 3rd, regardless of who wins. There's a lot of work to be done in order to actually bring equality to people. Uh, so I hope, that, I hope that we can actually come together and do it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, wrap this stuff up here. You know, uh, 
the usual likes, share, subscribe. Uh, you know, follow me on Rockfin if you're not following me on Rockfin. Uncensored content there. Um, on the freemium model. And uh, go to my website. Check out all the stuff on my website there. Krishmohanhaha.com. You can become a sustaining member there. You can download my albums. You can do a bunch of stuff. Check out past videos. Uh, it is getting a sprucing up. I am still working on that. Uh, so... Uh, it'll be it'll be spruced up soon. But thank you guys for for listening, and thank you guys for tuning into this. Uh, till the next time, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.